Every company is a cloud company today, right? Well, there's, some, there's one company that was in the cloud long before it was fashionable. Citrix Systems, way back in 1989, was founded. Coming up on its 30th anniversary, and uh, Citrix was a pioneer in the area of, of virtual desktop uh, infrastructure, delivering desktops from servers to the uh, as a virtual machine, long before anybody was using the term cloud. Well, Citrix is still going strong 30 years later, and its uh, Synergy Conference is coming up in, uh, at the end of May, May 21st through 23rd in Atlanta. With me is, is uh, Tim Minahan. I'm sorry, I almost said Stu Minahan, our, our analyst. <laughs> Tim Minahan, uh, who is the uh, Executive Vice President of Business Strategy and the Chief Marketing Officer at Citrix. Tim, welcome. Thank you, Paul, it's great to be here. I am Paul Gillen, this is theCUBE, and with Synergy coming up, theCUBE will be at Synergy, so we thought we'd take a chance today to uh, look a little bit at where Citrix is going, where it's come from, a company that is uh, still going strong, 50 acquisitions over the years, and really probably not the company that, that you would think of. People think of Citrix as desktop virtualization. Uh, I know you're still in that market, but I'm sure that Citrix is quite a different business today. So what, what business are you in? It absolutely is a, a much different business today, Paul. You know, this is not your father's uh, virtualization company anymore. We still, as you point out, continue to lead that market, both in market share uh, as well as innovation. Uh, however, um, based on our customer needs, as they've evolved to try to operate in this hybrid multi-cloud world, as they've tried to digitize their business, Citrix has also gone on a transformation journey. It's really, I would organize it around three primary transitions. One is moving from a, let's say, disparate array of individual products to much more integrated solutions that more holistically address the needs of our customers around digital workspace, around networking and security, and around analytics. The second one, as you intimated in your introduction, is our making our products or solutions available, not just on-premise for customers to manage in their own data centers, but as uh, cloud services, so that they can consume the technology in the way that they want and scale very quickly. But probably the most significant transition is moving from delivering uh, application delivery products to really becoming this strategic platform for work. And it, you talk about that in your, uh, your messaging, talks about uh, powering a better way to work. Well, what is a better way to work? Well, if you th Paul, if you think about today, really, um, as companies are beginning to digitize their business, as they're trying to compete around the world, one of the things that continues to come to the top is the need to drive a superior employee experience. Those companies that can attract the right talent, develop the skills needed for today's modern age, and give them the tools and the flexibility to work where and how they want becomes a competitive advantage. And so when we talk about powering a better way to work, we're bringing together our digital workplace, our networking, and our analytics technologies in order to empower companies to do that, to arm their employees with single sign-on access to everything they need to be productive in one unified experience that travels with them, whether they're working in the office, whether they're on the road, at a client meeting, in a hospital room, really allowing them to power a better way to work. And you say that this is particularly important for uh, attracting this new generation of knowledge workers. What are their expectations? How do you need to frame the workplace to, to make it appealing to them? Yeah, Paul, well, I think it's an interesting point you bring up. It's a misconception that you know it's all about the millennials. Well, yes, we are introducing new work styles, new work types, uh, and, and new generations into the workplace, but we have multiple generations in the workplace, each of which has uh, different ways in which they engage with technologies, each in which has different ways that they want to want to collaborate. But the one thing that that is key, if employee experience is you know going to be a competitive advantage, what's holding us back? And it really is all of this choice, all of this technology that we've brought into the market has created an unintended side effects, which is complexity. And employees are actually frustrated at work because they need to navigate multiple different environments, they need to remember multiple passwords, they need to spend time in a whole host of applications that may not be pertinent to their job, but it's something that they're required to do. So it's keeping them from their, from their core job. And so um, really what we're trying to do is you know, giving that unified experience, making it single sign on to all of your applications, all of your content, regardless of where you are, and then literally bringing intelligence into the workspace to allow employees to actually be guided through their day. So they don't need to log into multiple applications, but presenting up the insights and the tasks that they need to do to remove the noise from their day and get on doing their core fulfilling work. 
Of course, this is not your father's single sign-on anymore. It used to be single sign-on was for primarily on-prem applications. Today, everything's moving to the cloud. Uh, Citrix itself has undergone a sort of reinvention as a cloud-first company. Mm -hmm. Tell us what that involved and uh, and what that means for your customers. Yeah. Well, the, the very first thing is, you know, I, I came from a host of companies that have made the transition to uh, a cloud services model in the past, you know, most recently SAP. and. Um, I thought I was coming here to help Citrix transition to the cloud, but it became very clear really quickly, our job is to help our customers, you know, save our customers from the cloud. You know, allowing them to pursue their very unique cloud strategies as everyone's on a different path on this journey, you know, this hybrid multi-cloud environment, and to pursue that strategy with confidence. You know, giving them the latitude to be able to um, have uh, portability of their workloads. If they want to move them out of the data center to maybe Microsoft Azure or AWS or Google Cloud Platform or a private cloud, allowing them that flexibility, the interoperability and the portability that they need to do that at their own pace. Now, does what are the implications of that for your product line? Because are you talking about actually helping customers to manage the multi-cloud to shift <laughs> workloads, or is this more uh, in the area of, of uh, cr creating a unified work environment where all these applications come together? Well, the first the first step was certainly to make our offerings available as cloud services, so customers that wanted to consume them that way they could. The second step was indeed to provide a control plane that you know, allowed IT to really unify their entire environment, whether that workload was in the data center or in any of the public clouds I just mentioned, and have the portability to move them between uh, those environments as they saw fit. Um, related to that is unifying the, the, uh, the employee experience so that they, to your point, have single sign-on access to everything they need to be productive. So not just their, as you pointed out, their on-premise apps or their virtual apps, but their SaaS apps, which are growing in popularity and use across the enterprise, their mobile apps, their web apps, but not just their apps too. You know, those traditional virtual desktops that they might need. Or, importantly, their content, which uh, we all need to, to uh, organize and have the information we need to make the right decisions at the right time. So your, your content needs to be available in that workspace too, in a similar way, regardless of where it's stored. It could be stored in any of the uh, you know, public cloud storage uh, service providers. It might be stored on premise in a, in, a, in a SharePoint environment, and you need to be able to have that with you, regardless of whether you're working on your laptop at the office or on your smartphone on the train. Now you have a lot of cloud experience. You were at Ariba, which was a cloud, a cloud native company. Uh, you went to SAP during their transition to the cloud. Now uh, at Citrix, what kind of expectations are you helping the company set for how customer relationships change in a primarily cloud environment? You, you hit the the point right on the nose. The big change everyone thinks is well, it's making your products available as a service. Well, that's that's part of it, certainly. Well, it's, a, it's about transitioning to more of a subscription model. Well, that's, that's, that's also part of it. But the real big shift is the way you engage and support customers. You know, in a traditional on-premise world, you, know, you would celebrate when the deal gets done, right? In a cloud services model, you are an ongoing service provider. Your real goal is to help the customer drive adoption and achievement of their business outcomes. And so within, you know, within Citrix, what we've done, as in the previous companies we had before, I was at before, is we've made investments in that post-sale adoption. We have a full customer success team that is really your coach. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Come into the gym, we'll get you on the treadmill, we'll make sure you get the health benefits you want. Right? That's the type of environment and mentality we need to have, uh, even from a marketing perspective. There's a whole adoption marketing team now that is focused on working in unison with that customer success team so that we are ensuring that the customers have the information they need, on how to leverage the products, what functionality is available to them, and how to drive the business outcomes they were hoping to achieve. Are you find that finding the customer uh, uh, retention is actually better in a cloud environment? Do customers tend to stay longer, d despite the fact they're not paying these large licensing fees up front? Yeah, I think the, the, uh, the, the real secret to, to customer retention and driving that customer retention is ensuring, you know, number one, there's, there's clear alignment on what the business outcomes are to begin with. And number two, that you you have this infrastructure in place, or this this um, this coaching organization in place to make sure that they're, you know, they're driving to success. Um, and because oftentimes you've heard, you know, 
you've been in the business for a long time that IT projects, well, you know, the implementation goes on for too long or, mm -hmm. you know, we've implemented it, but now no one's using it. And really in, in a cloud services model, that can't happen, right? It's, you know, similar to any service you subscribe to as an individual, whether it's your cable service or the like. If you're not using something, at the end of that turn subscription turn, you're going to turn it off. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the uh, in, in a cloud services model, the, the provider, like Citrix, is much more aligned with the business outcomes that the customer is hoping to achieve. Now, I know you're not a development guy, but in, in the process of uh, sort of overhauling the product line, mm -hmm. there are a lot of new architectural <coughs> tools that can be used, such as serverless computing, microservices. What have you done in terms of restructuring the way you, uh, you build your products? Yeah, it's interesting, there's a few things. No, the biggest one is, instead of in an on-premise world, you know, you would deliver a monolithic, you know, upgrade. Here we go, every few, you know, 18 months, two years, three years, and, uh, and then work on helping your customers move that way. In a cloud services model, we're delivering innovation, you know, every week. <laughs> and uh, it be, be, just gets turned on as, as part of that service. So a much more agile uh, development methodology. And yes, you know, behind the scenes, you mentioned microservices and the like that, you know, uh, what we're seeing within our customers as they're looking at how do I, how do I begin to abstract you know those monolithic applications and turn them into more microservices that are much more agile that I can test things I can deploy them very quickly, we're using those same uh, type of techniques within Citrix ourselves. You um, uh, you've had a, a lot of experience with uh, SaaS providers. How do you prepare a company culturally to make that leap? From selling, you know, the big, the big uh, licensed package to a subscription model, a lot of people are affected inside the company by a change like that. Yeah, no, absolutely, and uh, you know, part of it is <clears throat> transitioning, literally from from selling to being a a trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. Right? What is the business outcome you want to achieve? Let's land with this particular capability to get you going, and then. As you mature, as you begin to get the initial benefit, let's expand beyond that. And so, what we were talking about with the customer success for post-sale adoption, really, to your point, moves back up the chain to how we engage customers even at the outset. You, the company has done more than 50 acquisitions, or I believe exactly 50 acquisitions. I know you weren't there for all of them, but um, do you have any thoughts, uh, obviously very successful, the company does this very well. What are some, some secrets of making acquisitions work? I think one of the biggest um, uh, opportunities and, and, and secrets to making uh, such acquisitions work is having a really solid post-merger integration plan. And when I say post-merger integration, yes, you need to integrate that technology into your overall uh, solution set so that it you know, increases the value to the customers. Obviously, you know, having a clear roadmap on that, clearly articulating that both to the organization as well as to the customers. In fact, you know, both your existing customers and the added value they're going to get, but the ones that of the company you've acquired. But I think the even uh, the bigger opportunity lies in making sure on the post-merger integration side you have a clear plan for how you're going to integrate that, that culture and the like. So as you acquire companies, you know, particularly as you acquire you know, SaaS companies, for example, right, infusing that, that SaaS mentality into your overall organization. You've acquired this company because they were doing well, they had a unique capability, maybe they had unique skill sets that you need, and making sure that you have a clear plan for how to uh, help that thrive in your new environment. One of your your uh, roles is as head of marketing, and I understand you're sort of a data-driven guy. You're a big believer in data-driven marketing. Uh, more dashboards than you can imagine. Really? <laughs> I, well, how uh, it, Marketing and sales, typically in B2B companies, don't have the best of relationships. How are you using data to bridge that divide? Yeah, I think that's, that's an excellent uh, it's an excellent question, and I do think data is the answer. You know, part of that traditional kind of yin and yang or friction between sales and marketing is a result of you know, biases and opinions. When you organize around data, um, you begin to eliminate that. You get to the facts. And so I mentioned I have more dashboards than, uh, uh, than I care to note. But those dashboards are shared with you know, my counterpart, the chief revenue officer, as well as you know, his senior leadership team. So we're all looking at the same data. You know, we're all identifying, hey, where we are with this customer, where we are with the overall you know, pipeline growth, and it is, not going into a meeting and you know, not spending the first 45 minutes disputing the data, but saying, hey, look, we are collectively seeing this and you know, looking at driving solutions 
on how to maybe accelerate something or you know, provide a little extra service to a customer because you know, we're all looking at the same data. Data is a absolutely a, a great leveler and eliminating a lot of the traditional friction that has existed between sales and marketing. Uh, Citrix is one of the oldest, if uh, that's a term, I don't, they don't like to use that term in software, but it's been around a long time. 30 years young. One, one of the things, a uh, big celebration coming up in April, I understand, your 30th anniversary. Uh, one of the things that happens to companies that have been around a long time is they acquire misperceptions. Customers tend to view, view them as they were many years ago. What misperception about Citrix would you most like to correct? Uh, I think you know, the, the, you know, the biggest misperception is the one you started with, that hey, you know, Citrix is the virtualization company. And yes, we were the pioneer in virtualization because at a time uh, when we burst onto the scene 30 years ago, you had this new rising information worker, you had client server technologies, and that worker wanted to work outside the office, and what were you going to do? Well, Citrix provided an answer. Well, over the years, we've continued to innovate as companies move to mobile, and now as they move to the cloud, and they want to, you know, in, embrace entirely new work models that allow them to give the, their employees full-time contractors, gig workers, uh, access to the tools they need to collaborate and, and be very effective in, and fulfilled in their jobs. We're there now, right? And so we've continued to evolve with and even ahead of the market. Um, so virtualization, still relevant for um, some, some key customers and some of the most you know, mission critical applications, but they have these other needs too, and Citrix has evolved to, to uh, support those as well. And in two months, at uh, end of May, you'll have uh, bringing your users together at, uh, at Citrix Synergy in Atlanta. Uh, how many people do you expect to have there? Just about 6,000 or so. About 6,000, huge crowd. What are you going to tell them? What are the messages you want them to take away? Well, the, the top line theme for the conference is really, you know, um, how the future works. You know, we've talked a lot about, you know, this is, you know, the future of work and it's coming. Well, guess what? It is here. You know, we have multiple generations working in, you know, in the workforce today. We have entirely new work styles. We have, as I mentioned, these, you know, these gig workers, contractors, full-time employees. We have... Um, entirely different uh, you know, devices and applications that have come into this environment and people want to collaborate through different channels, Teams and Slack, as well as you know, traditional email. So how do we you know, bring all of that together? And we believe that you know, we're delivering this today. Our customers are seeing real benefit by having this unified digital uh, workspace experience and making that available to their employees. You know, we're now injecting, like I mentioned, machine learning and simplified workflows or micro apps into that environment to make employees even more productive within the workspace than outside of it, really guiding them through their day. So when we say this is how the future works, you know, the key message is, you know, uh, we're, you know, the future is here today. We're delivering the experience, the security, and the choice that uh, employees and organizations need to drive innovation, to engage customers and employees in new digital ways, and to be productive anytime, anywhere. Well, it's a huge agenda, Atlanta, and if you're a Citrix customer, you certainly want to be there. Even if you're not a Citrix customer, you'll want to follow us on theCUBE, as theCUBE will be on the ground in Atlanta yes. at Citrix Synergy. Uh, Tim, have a great conference. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Paul. Look forward to seeing you in Atlanta. I'm Paul Gillen, this is theCUBE.